بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله إن شاء الله we'll continue our class of علوم القرآن uh, we have chosen بفضل الله سبحانه وتعالى to go through uh, النظم الحبي في علوم القرآن وأصول التفسير uh, our reference book is الإتقان في علوم القرآن and the, the notes that I sent which is mainly uh, a summary of a book لمحات في علوم القرآن واتجاهات التفسير so from all this reference inshallah we make in our class walhamdulillahi rabbil alam uh, I ask you to read a uh, few uh, few chapters so to be you know so when we go through the 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 whole class, if you have any question, uh, there is a lot of details in Al-Itqan, which they are good, but you might not be uh, able to go through them. But the most important is to uh, know the many, the, the very, let's say, the most important part of the Ulum Al-Quran. Uh, I believe in the Matan, we uh, stopped at Al-Makki wal Madani. Al Makki wa Madani with the verse 62. Al Bayt min al Nadmi raqam 62. Taib. in Nodham, uh, uh, the Bayt 53 to 61, we have Awa'il al-Nuzul wa Awakhir al-Nuzul. So, my question to you, what is in the most, uh, I mean, the strongest opinion in the last ayah revealed in the Qur'an? What is the last ayah revealed in the Qur'an according to the strongest of opinion? The first A is Iqra. It is mentioned in the uh, Bayt 61. So what is the A? Ayat al-Din. Not Ayat al-Din. The eighth day is close to it, but not eighth day. The last ayah. No, not certain we say. It is with eighth day, but not eighth day. It's the ayah that before eighth day. No. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ In the ayah, the one that before ate the day. That's why he said, قَالَ فَقَدِّمِ الْبَعْضَ بِغَيْرِ مَيْنٍ بَعْدَ الْرِبَى وَقَبْلَ آيِ الدَّيْنِ بَعْدَ الْرِبَى أي after the ayah of the riba, and just before ayat al-day, which is وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاتْثُمَّ تُوَفَّ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ So the ayat 281 from Surah Al-Baqarah. And I fear the day, fear the day, the day in which you go back to Allah, then every soul will be uh, compensated or rewarded justly with what it has done. Subhanallah. That's the last A. Tayyip. 
concerning al-Makki wal-Madani. Al-Makki wal-Madani, you have it in the first chapter of Itqan, uh, uh, Al-Itqan, right? Al-Makki wal-Madani. So what have you read in al-Makki wal-Madani? Ma'rifatu al-Makki wal-Madani. What is the most important thing that we need to know about Al-Makki wal Madani in this chapter? That's the most important that you need to know. Everything revealed before the Hijrah is Makki and everything reported afterward is Madani. Thus, the line of demarcation is the Hijrah. Everything before the Hijrah in any place is Madan, is Makki. And everything after the Hijrah, even if it was revealed in Mecca, is Madan. So here, Yaqulu al Musannifu al Nadimu in 62, verse 62. قرآننا المكي ثم المدني مراد ذين ظاهر للمعتني وفي اختلاف ما هو المراد هل المكان أصله يراد Now he's telling you here the Quran, there's Quran مكي and مدني and the difference of opinion is no one as قال هل المكان أصله يراد are we going to talk about the place to be our reference to call which Qur'an is Madani and which Qur'an is Makki? أو أن ما يراد في الزمان دون اعتداد حالة المكان أو أن ما يراد في الزمان I mean what we are considering is the time, the zaman دون اعتداد without considering the مكان, the place وبعضهم يقول إن المعتبر بحالة المخاطبين في البشر. Some of them they differentiate the Mecca or Madani based on the uh, speech how the Quran is addressing to the people. But the fact to address to the people is more as aspect and characteristic who help us to know the Mecca from the Madani, but are not definitive to be like the Mecca al Madani, because we know the Mecca al Madani by knowing when it was revealed. But some of the signs helping us to know that is Mecca or Madani by the way Allah addressing to the people. For example, here, قَالَ بِحَالَةِ الْمُخَاطَبِينَ فِي الْبَشَرِ When Allah addressing to the people. كَأَنْ يُنَادَى بَعْضُهُمْ بِالنَّاسِ فَذَاكَ لِلْمَكِّيِّ مِنْ أَسَاسِ Every time you see an ayah starting, Ya ayyuhan nas, or you mankind, hmm? oh mankind, this is, this is Mecca. This is Mecca. Allah, when he addressed, when you say in the Quran, oh you mankind, oh you people, huh? Ya ayyuhan nas. So this is, is a sign for you to know that is ayah Mecca. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe. This is madani. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is addressing to the group of the believer. And the only time the believer, they were all together, they were in Medina. وَرُجِحَ الزَّمَانُ عِنْدَ الْمُدْخِنِ I mean, the, uh, the opinion saying about the line of demarcation is the time. That is what was رُجِح. رُجِح it means like outweight, to be like the most preferred or the strongest opinion. When we say الزَّمَانُ, so we have مَكَان, so we have three types of, the, you know, to help us differentiate between the Mecca and Madani, according to the scholar. The place or the way 
the people is addressed in the Quran or the time. We said the place, it's not, you know, a strong opinion because some Quran was revealed in the end of the life of the Prophet وسلم, in Mecca. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم one of the uh, last ayat in the Quran was revealed around Mecca in the Hajj. Hmm? When you're talking about the way the people are addressed, that more signs than uh, facts, because there's many ayat does not have Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, Ya ayyuhannasu, how co- can we verify are they Mecca or Madani? As zamanu, is the one the most in the strongest opinion, but when you talk on about the time, what line of demarcation in the time to help us differentiate between the Mecca and Madani is Al Hijr. Here he said, Qala wal aslu fi zamani waqtu al hijrati alamatan lil farqi inda al kathrati. This is the sign of separating or differentiating between the Mecca and Madani. Among the majority of the scholars. And they defined from the surah of Al Madani 20 surah. And uh, here you can find, uh, you find them in Al Itqan, all of them here. So you see, Qala Ishirina Surah. And in uh, Al Itqan, in the book that you have, Qala wa Qala Abu al Hassan ibn al Hassari fi kitabihi al Nasihi wal Mansukh al Madani bit Tifaki Ishiruna Surah. Wal Muhtala Fufihi itnata Ashrata Surah. Wama ada derika makiyum bit Tifak. So you call Abu al Hassan. Uh, it was agreed upon that there's 20 surah Madani, 12 surah are, you know, uh, there's difference of opinion about them, and the rest are Mecca. The rest are Mecca. Can you find it in this book, what I have read? Do you remember you read it, right? Good. Yeah. So let me give you the page. Which page? Yeah. Five. Okay. Yeah, Abu Hassan al Hassar says in his book. And then they had that Nudum. Uh, they put it in English. <coughs> He's printing? But you have it on on soft copy, no? The novel. I think we send it, right? Yeah, you have. So he's saying here, uh, Okay, so he given us example, and بالفتح والحديد ثم قد سمع ولا تقدم التحريم فاستمع منافقون جمعة والحشر طلاق والممتحن والنصر 
So the, uh, the Suwar, Surat Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, Al-Nisa, Al-Ma'ida, Al-Anfal, Al-Tawbah, Al-Nur, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Ahzab, Al-Fatih, Al-Hadid, Qad Sami' Allah, Qawla Lati Tujadiluk, so this is Al-Mujadala, uh, Wala Taqaddamu, Wala Taqaddamu, uh, Surat Al-Hujurat, uh, Al-Tahrim, المنافقون الجمعة الحشر الطلاق الممتحنة وصورة النصر إذا جاء نصر الله واختلفوا في عدة من السور تعد جملة على ثنتي عشر كالفاتحة والرعد والرحمن والصف والتطفيف للعيان تغابن بينة بعد القدر زلزلة إخلاص يا من اقتدر ثم الفلق والناس للخبير وكل حاذق به جدير وما عدا ما قد مضى مكي ينبيك عنهن الفتى الذكي So he also he mentioned the twelve that has difference of opinion فاتحة الرعد الرحمن this is three الصف التطفيف المطففين this is five تغاب بينا سورة التغاب سورة البينا seven uh, uh, the one that comes after القدر then الزلزة ولا والإخلاص uh, nine الفلق الناس and القدر now some of the scholars they saying these some of the ayat why there is اختلاف because They've been revealed twice. They've been revealed in the Mecca time and then in Madani time. Like Surah Al-Fatiha has been revealed more than one time. The same for Surah Al-Ikhlas. Wallahu a'ala. وَيُعْرَفُ الْجَمِيعُ بِالنُّقُولِ وَبِالْقِيَاسِ مِنْ ذَوِي الْأُصُولِ And all of it is known by the Nukul. And Nukul, which is like narration, or Balqiyas. And then in Al-Itqan goes uh, Surah Al-Hadid, for example, Uh, why he saying قَالَ قَالَ الْجُمُورَ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهَا مَدَنِيَّةً وَقَالَ قَوْمِ إِنَّهَا مَكِّيَّةً But the beginning of Surah Al-Hadid looks like Makkiyah, but the rest is Madan. Surah Al-Saf Al-Mukhtaru, Anha Madaniya. Surah Al-Jumu'a Al-Sahih, Anha Madaniya. And then go to Surah Al-A'la, Surah Al-Fajr. Fiha Qawlan, Hakiahuma Ibn Al-Fars, Qala Abu Hayyan Al-Jumu'a Ala Anha Makkiyah. Surah Al-Balad, Hakiah Ibn Al-Fars, Fiha Aydan Qawlain, Wa Qawluhu Bihada Al-Balad. يرد القول بأنها مدنية. so as you see there's this difference of opinion based on the نقول based on the نقول. what about the مكي and the مدني what do you need to know about it and this is one of the things that as a student of knowledge you need to know because sometimes you know we know the Mecca now, what is being revealed before the uh, Hijra and the, uh, the Madani after the Hijra. Type some of the characteristics of both of them. Here, 
طيب I read some of the summary that we have on those notes that we send in English in المكي والمدني يقول the Quran was revealed for you know during 23 years and during this uh, time قال حدث حادث عظيم لعله أحضم الأحداث في حياة النبي what happened one of the great event in the life of the prophet uh, after the uh, prophethood after the revelation was the event of the hijrah the Quran used to be revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu in Mecca to face a society of jahili. People are denying, refuting, and turning away from the message of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and to guide the minority who accepted the faith and following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in Medina, it was totally different aspect. So in Medina, the Quran was facing a society that is being founded on the faith, on the Iman, and is based and founded on their submission to the way of the deen. Therefore, it was more natural to, uh, to have totally different topics here of the Qur'an when he is addressing into this time, different time. قال لقد نزل القرآن ليرب أمة العقيدة التي تبقى مهمتها ما بقيت على الأرض حياة The Quran first was revealed to guide and to educate the Ummah, the group of Aqidah, of the creed and the, the uh, mission associated to the creed it will be alive and uh, a mission relevant and requested to be lived, observed and conveyed as long as life exists on earth. That's why, you know, you're going to find two types of Qur'an. So, if we say Al-Makki wal Madani, we already have said it, that Al-Rajihu anna Al-Makki ma nazala min Al-Qur'an qabla Al-Hijrah wa anna Al-Madani ma nazala ba'da. That's the thing that we need to retain. طيب what are the characteristics of al-Makki now we know that the Makki is all what was revealed before before the Hijrah first characteristic of the Makki Quran the Makki Quran is in in general he's dealing and treating and solving and addressing to the topic of creed, of faith. And this topic of creed is addressed in, in kind of um, intellectual way as, you know, inviting to reflect and wujdani emotional way, like spiritual way. أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Look, do not they say to the evil, كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِذَا السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ فَذَكِّرْ this is this is Mecca. So an invitation to reflect, to ponder in the creation, an invitation to build that faith. Ayat, uh, there's a lot of وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ إِلَى خِرِ Those are Mecca, خلق, 
creation, to think of the origin of the creation of the human being. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, uh, So you see, all is like celebrate uh, the praises of Allah, the one who created. So it's all related to the creation, uh, to the pondering. So it's always aqliya, nadariya, kind of reflecting and pondering and spiritual. So that's one of the characteristics of the Makki. It's also talking about the haqiqat al-uluhiyya, haqiqat al-uluhiyya, the reality and the definition of the meaning of the deity, of the servitude, of the relationship between the servitude and the deity and the uluhiyya. And presenting to the humankind, you know, the definition and the identity of the God that he's asking them and inviting them to worship him. And to follow his commands, to follow his sharia. And to cleanse the creed from anything or the fitrah, the inner nature, from any defect or any impurity that is uh, that was introduced to them. And to bring back humankind to the ilah al-haq, to ilah al-haq. So this is all in the Mecca topics. Also, from the characteristic of the Mecca, that you see the argument of the non-believers, the dispute, how they conflict, how they ask in the Prophet ﷺ miracles, all that's Mecca. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْفِي وقال لولا نزل عليه القرآن جملة واحدة وقال الذين كفروا إن هذا إلا إفك نفتراه إلى آخره. They saying, they saying, they denying. وقالوا لن نؤمن لك حتى تفجر لنا من الأرض ينبوع. All of that, this ayat when you see the argument, the dispute. Uh, of the disbeliever, those are Mecca. And then you find the threatening to the disbeliever, reminding the disbeliever, reprimanding the disbeliever, those are Mecca. Also, Al-Quran al makki one of his characteristics that he narrated the story of those deniers or those rejecter of the faith. That's also one of the characteristics of the Quran Makki. One also of the characteristic of the Quran Makki, they have short ayat, short ayat. And you find a lot of the uh, word kalla. Kalla, which has, has that Connotation of zajr, reprimanding. Kalla, la tutahu waqtarab. Kalla, fasjud waqtarab. Kalla, so you find kalla that, that zajr, nay, and that, that power, that, that greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the believers at these first uh, steps or first, uh, you know, uh, years of faith. It's give them power. Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayyidin. Things like that. And the suwar, also Mecca, they start with short or with letters. Like qaf, hamim, kaf haya ayin sad. Qala zarkashiyu wa kullu suratin fiha hurufu al-mu'jami fahiya makkiyya. إلا البقرة وآل عمران وفي الرعد خلاف. Every surah that starts with a disconnected letter 
ار مكي اكسبت البقره ان الي عمره الف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب ولا يرث الف لام ميم الله لا اله الا الله القيوم ان ان سوره الرعد الف لام ميم را ات هاز ديفرنس اوف اوبينيون بين بينج مكيه اور مكيه مدني And the style of the Mecca, deep, and it has a tone that hit deep in the soul. So they have the eloquence of the of the speech, the depth of the meaning, and a very uh, distinguished, if you can say, uh, tone. والعاديات يضبحا فالموريات قدحا فالمغيرات صبحا is a tone سبحان الله that's that's for the new in faith it hit deep and deep every air go farther and deeper in the soul these are all the style of Mecca treating the aqidah building the creed changing the concept and rebuilding the whole subhanallah element of the of the life of the human being uh, i'll give you an example huh? هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع شورت آية very uh, tempo and tone strong and then subhanallah the way of the speech makes someone to be like hunted with such terrifying and horrifying environment faces are like in humiliated it's like you feel it's like tired you know, see sadness, worry, uh, depressed. And then you understand why. They are in a very blazing fire. Even their food and their drink. And look, even the description of their food it use it with the letters that are heavy letters, not smooth letters. Dad is one of the letters that are the heaviest. Someone say, what is for, what do you have food? Say, dhariya. Someone say, dhariya and say, tufah. What we gonna, you don't know what is tufah, which is the apple. So what do we have as food? He said, I have Bariya and Tufah. What are you going to choose? You're going to use the Tufah. Because Bariya is like scary. They say, I don't eat that. That's how the Quran. Now look the other one. Wujuhu yawma'idhin na'ima. Opposite to khashia. Na'ima. Lisa'iha radiyah. في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة Now, imagine the first time you listen to this ayat. 
and you don't know about Islam. What is the aspect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized on it here? It's amazing, by the way. In the faces. You see, you look at someone, he said, uh, are you okay? He said, why are you telling me? He said, your face doesn't look. He said, no, I'm fine. He said, no, you're not fine. Your face. He said, yes, I had this. And oh, yeah, you understand. So whatever in the face is the expression of someone's state of soul. So they say, وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ خَاشِعَ وَائِ Therefore, look, the dream of the one who's reading this ayah, he does not target to have a glamour and shiny face in this dunya. He wants to have it in the akhirah. قَالَ وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ نَعِمَ At that day, نَعِمَ so he said, Ya Allah, how can I have, Ya Allah, help me to have, to be my face among the wujuh and na'imah. And this is, you see, how it restructure one thinking, one purpose in his life. That's why the Quran changed the life of the, of jahiliyyah to be life of iman. And this is one of the characteristic of, as we're saying, the Mecki, the Madani is different. The Madani is different. So some of the uh, the Madani doesn't have this short ayah and this deep tone. When you want to admonish a person, you know the short sentence that give like, you know, uh, it really have um, an impact on someone's feeling. But when you go to tell him, to explain to him how to do, you're going to take your time, right? Someone, he's driving, and is about to, to fall uh, from a cliff. How are you going to talk to him? How are you going to, to warn him? Screaming, sir. Stop, stop. So you need to be like things like uh, short. You're not going to say him, uh, you know, you are driving fast and there's a cliff who's going to come and this cliff is like, you know, 300 meters high and anyone who fall from this cliff, he going to die. So be careful. You might fall from it and you might die. <laughs> by, by the way, being the sentence, the guy is dead already. <laughs> there's people that call them Nahwi. Nahwi, those who always talk about, you know, long sentences and they want to choose their uh, uh, words to be eloquent. They want to always make up a uh, poem. So one uh, person, Nahwi, they called Nahwi, he fell uh, in, in a pit, in a ditch filled with filth. And he cannot get out. So imagine someone is in filth and like mud and smelly, and someone passing by and he saw him. So the one who's in the in the ditch, he told him, you know, in his style, he said, Go find the rope, and when you find the rope, send it to me in a kind way. And when it comes, so it's like he's building a poem. <laughs> so the man, like, you know, he's like short temper. He told him, by the one who created me, I will not help you as long as you talk this way. And he left him and he's gone. Because the way of the speech 
It doesn't fit his situation. I mean, he can help, brother, help me on things. So just make that uh, express the situation of emergency for people to be helping you. But if someone in that situation, he feel like he's taking a nap, he's like, you know, just, you know, enjoying it. Nobody will help you. So the Quran al makki comes in a way that to help you save yourself. In the Madani, is going to guide you how you're going to build the way that is guaranteed for you the saving. So I say, okay, now I know what should they do. Now sit down. I'm going to explain to you. You have to do one this and two this and three this and this. So when you say khasa'as al-madani, you have already the jama'ah ready to listen. They're surrendered. They want to learn. قال نرى المدني غالبا يعالج بناء المجتمع المسلم. So the مدني the focus is how to correct and to build the Muslim society. قال ابن القيم خاطبهم بقوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا. First Allah calling them in different name. All you who believe before all you mankind. Now all you who believe. All son of Adam, all child of Adam. O oh man, ya ibn Adam, ya bani Adam, ya ayyuhal insanu. Now it becomes ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Different. It's a gift that between Allah and his servant. Qal, wal khitabu bidhalika kulluhu madani. Every ayah you see in it, ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, is madani. And the Quran madani is treating and correcting and edifying the system related to the family and in different aspects of life, in transaction, in economy, in the uh, relationship between spouses, uh, talking about uh, you know marriage, separation, inheritance, as you can see in Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Nisa. And all this ahkam is coming out from the creed. Because if you don't have the foundation of the aqidah, this ahkam cannot be, you know, settled into society. Also, one of the characteristics of the madani that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about al-munafiqoon. When you see al-munafiqoon, only in Madani. Allah uncovered their plots, their cunning. In the Madani also, you find the argument of the people of the book. In the Mecca, the argument Address it to the Mushrikeen, to disbeliever. In the Madani, people of the book. As the Jews and the Christians, they used to say, Ibrahim was Jew. And the Christian, he said he was a Christian. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered them. مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُدِيًّا وَلَا نَصَرَيْنِي وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ also, one of the characteristic, uh, other characteristic of the Madani that you see in it, the uh, relating the rules, the ahkam, the laws, the laws of uh, fight, the laws of war, of peace, of truth, uh, things related to the to the dawla, all of it, as you see it in Al Anfal, Wa Tawbah, Wa Surat Muhammad. And all of this also it has a different style than the Mecca style. Long ayat, as you said, explained and detailed, not like the Mecca, short tone, the short ayah and strong tone. But both style, Mecca and Madani, they both miraculous, very specific to the Quran. No one can 
Kendi raporu göster. If we go to the companion of one Allah Ta'ala alayhim to give us more uh, information about the difference between al-Makki and al-Madani, we have this hadith on Ibn Mas'ud in the radiallahu anhu. Qal, Wallahi alladhi la ilaha ghayruh, ma unzilat suratun min kitab illa 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 ana a'lamu ayna nuzilat. Unzilat. Look how the companion, they follow and they learn said by the one who there is no God except him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no single surah in the book of Allah. Any surah, there is no single. That I know where it was revealed. Not, not when, he knows where. وَلَا أُنزِلَتْ آيَةٌ وَكِتَبِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا أَنَا أَعْلَمُ فِيمَا أُنزِلَتْ And there is no single ayah in the Qur'an. But I know on whom it was, it was revealed. وَلَوْ أَعْلَمُ أَحَدًا أَعْلَمَ مِنِّي بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَبْلُغُهُ الْإِبِلْ لَرَكِبْتُ إِلَيْهِ And if I know, if I learn that there is anyone who knows more than me in the book of Allah, that the camel could reach him, I will travel for him. Some of the uh, benefit to know the Mecca and the Madani. So as the Ulum al-Quran, we're studying, what are the benefits? One of the great benefits is to know al-Nasikh wal-Mansukh. What is al-Nasikh wal-Mansukh? Uh, we studied in, uh, we're going to study it also in the Ulum al-Quran as a chapter, as we studied in Usul al-Fiqh as a chapter. الناسخ والمنسوخ. You find ناسخ أبرجيت an ayah that was revealed before. So you have an ayah that comes to abrogate another ayah before it. And we studied before, right? So الناسخ it can be uh, it has different forms. It's either new ayah abrogate a previous ayah. The previous ayah is being taken away from the Quran. You find also an abrogation of an ayah, but the ayah that has been abrogated will still be in the Quran recited, but the hukum that contained it, the law contained in this ayah, is being abrogated by the new ayah. The example that all of you know is the ayat concerning the prohibition of the intoxicant alcohol, the khamar. The first ayah, قَالَ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ للناس. He said it has great, big ithm, sins, and it has benefit for people talking about uh, using uh, alcohol and uh, gambling. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَقَرَبُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْتُمْ سُفَرُوا Do not come close to the prayer and you are drunk. Then in Surah Al-Ma'idah, قَالَ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ فَاشْتَنِبُوهُ Be away and far from it. This is the prohibition. The two ayah we still recite in the Qur'an. But we don't apply only the one in Surah Al-Ma'idah because we cannot say it's fine to drink but not during the prayer or when you go to pray. So this is when you know the Mecca and the Madani, you know whatever was revealed in Medina came after. So if in the Hukum of Medina, conflict with the Hukum that is in the Mecca, so you know the Mecca is abrogated. Why? Because a nasih the abrogated always comes, <coughs> sorry, comes after in time. So any hukum that comes different from a previous hukum, the last one is the one that prevails. So this is one of the 
منفعه of the benefit another great benefit in knowing al-makki wal-madani is to know the steps that the quran took to build the individual and to build the society the steps to help have the believer afterward uh, the way how to correct how to do the reform how to help someone you know gradually uh, elevate uh, his status to be among the good believers and the society to be a society of believers because there's many things in our life today that we cannot implement the madani ahkam why because they lost the makki ahkam for example I'll give you an example that many of you they they really face this you have people for example they come to you ask you to help them about you know their marriage example all the ahkam of the marriage they are from the makki or madani period from the madani period but when you ask these people, you find them they don't live in Islam. They live different lifestyle of Islam. So if you want to help these people, tell them first come back to Islam <coughs> in real practice of Islam. Where's your taqwa inside the house? Where's your prayer inside the house? Where's your connection inside the house? The connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you bring those elements, then the ahkam of the sharia can help you. But now this ahkam cannot help you. Why? Because you live a lifestyle that causes you to have this problem. If you change your lifestyle to be in the way of Islam, then this ahkam can help you. This is a simple example. Someone uh, come new in Islam or repent, Muslim, and a person who, who get used to drink heavily. The ahkam you're going to tell him, you have to stop everything and to pray because alcohol is haram. But this person, he just came to Islam. He's going to say, how can I help him? Can he stop right away the drinking? He cannot. Then, if you look at the Quran, you'll find that Allah gave you steps. It's haram for you, but for that person who just came, you're going to help him. What are you going to tell him? You need to start to pray, to connect with Allah. But one thing, do not come to the prayer and you're drunk. So you know what you're saying to Allah. Him, with the common sense, he will welcome it. Why? Because you help him to connect with the one that he just met, Allah, and he wants to submit with. And you give him like, you know, a speech of common sense. How can you talk to Allah and you are drunk? He's going to say, of course, no. So you're going to help him make an effort. To not drink when he's going to meet Allah. It's in the Quran. Then slowly, after him connected with Allah, loving Allah, and start to introduce in the lifestyle of Islam, you're going to tell him, but you know it's haram. You know what he's going to tell you? You say, I already stopped it. But from the beginning, he said, you look, you cannot pray, you cannot become Muslim. Say, Alhamdulillah, you are welcome, but you have to do this, you have to do this. Then you're going to pressure a person that he's going to cause him to be hypocrite with himself. He's going to stop it when he still love it. Then after a short while, he's going to come back to his way. So this is 
when you know al-Makki or al-Madani, it helps us even to help people how to walk into the path of the repentance or the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, وأخيراً, uh, also knowing the Mecca and Madani help us to better understand the Quran and better have more accurate tafsir. Why? Because you take the ayah is in context. Because one of the wrong interpretation, one of the reason of there's a lot of wrong interpretation. First, ignorance, people, they do interpret the Quran without knowledge. The second, they don't put it into, into context. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَاتِلُوا الَّذِينَ يَلُونَكُمْ مِنَ الْكُفَّةِ Fight those who are around you from the disbeliever. This ayah, out of his context, it does not go with the justice of Islam. Out of context, it's like someone is obligated to fight. Every time you see a disbeliever say, uh, sorry, I have to fight you. This is what Allah told me. Get ready, we're going to fight. But the context, it was in Surah at tawbah The context, it was a society of Islam just arrived. And the threatening about the disbeliever around them who plotting against them. The uh, Al-Ahzab, the last of the biggest confident army that came to exterminate them. Therefore, in a strategic way to stabilize and put safety in the society of Islam, you have to build kind of a hassan. And anyone around the disbeliever who intending to fight, who intending to attack you. So you attack them before they come to you. Strategic. And you knowing the intention of those around you. So this is the context when you study it. Therefore, in later time, when you find, for example, a society building themselves and around them enemies, say, don't care about them, or don't care about them, they're going to attack you. So to build that force, as you see today in all the strategy of the, uh, the society and the governance today, protecting themselves and having, like, you know, borders and things, and then whoever who come to attack a certain lines, they're going to be uh, attacked. So in this context, so when you saw it in Madani, you're going to study the society of Madani, who was around them, who they were, their allies, how many, you know, tribes around them, they were like enemy to them, who are like allies with the people of Quraysh, etc., etc., and plotting against them, etc. And you know what happened actually after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? People, you know, claiming false prophethood and things. So the context is always to be like in a state of emergency, state of awareness. But not just to take it out of the context. And unfortunately, people who want to make money, they do such a thing. I mean, a few years ago, someone uh, having like um, pretending being uh, a Muslim was Muslim, you know, that's what he say. And uh, he was, uh, he made up story because the article that I read is about doubting about this person. He's kind of more like charlatan than, uh, than a true person who's activist. And all his seminar is about how the Quran is teaching the Muslim to be terrorists. So his seminar, he gave them to police department. He's, every, he's making a lot of money and he's saying that he was, you know, uh, suffered from this Muslim and this, and he turned to change his faith because of that. And he welcomed in this new faith. 
And then the article that, you know, someone sent me, it was about doubting about all this story, which is this person, he's make it out of it as a business to make money. And all the ayah that he mentioned, all of it is out of context. Take it out, you say, look, kill them all. That's what he put, for example, in his, uh, you know, presentation. Kill them all. So people that will be like, you know, non-Muslim, say, this is their scripture, kill them all. And he will be going on and on and on. So the, the context to know that he's Madani, why none of this ayat exists in Mecca, or could not. So in Madani, you read, you study the context, the situation of the society, the people around them, to understand the context, because the context is help to give you the tafsir, not the ayah on its own. Inshallah, we stop here. This is the end of the Mecca and the Madani. And the next time, bi Allah, we start with Asbab and Nuzul. Asbabu and Nuzul, bi Allah. The reason of revelation. Any question? Inshallah, next time we'll do at Tahfa al -Iraqi. Yes. Well, that's the summary that we have done. <laughs> Well, look, I told you to read it so we will not go through all these details. So when I give you the conclusion, you know how many opinions out there. And then we get the conclusion and we build on the conclusion what we need to know and what it helps us to know, like the Mecca and Medin. We came to a conclusion, you know, because they have the Nahari and the Layli, the Saifi and the Shita'i, right? It's like a lot of details. Do we need those details? If we know them, that's fine. Now, the conclusion, the Mecca, whatever before Hijrah and the Medi after Hijrah. Then based on that, we study the characteristic and what is the benefit. So when we come out from the class, we said, Alhamdulillah, this is the Mecca and Madani. When someone say, but some of the say, he said, yes, there's a lot of other opinion, but this is the major and the most important opinion. And based on that, how you can actually help you in the tafsir, in the analysis of the Quran. All of them, for example, you say, you know, what are the Nahari Quran? What is going to help you as an analysis today? Yeah. So the last area, the most, you know, uh, strongest opinion, and it goes even, uh, subhanAllah, in the spirituality of the message of Islam. Because that area between these two, uh, between the subject of the riba and the subject of the loan, the most devastating, uh, let's say, problem in the society is this two item, riba, and money, both of them about money, subhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the last ayah to be there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ After the riba. And they say, fear the day when you're going to come back to Allah. Because the someone who does not have fear, he's not going to fear to honor the loan of people. He's not going to fear to use any of the riba. And that ayah, subhanAllah, it should be the last ayah. Because after you do everything and you just be with yourself, you're going to think about who? About how you're going to meet Allah. So the last ayah in the Quran, get ready to meet Allah. I'll give you all the constitution, everything, go get ready to meet Allah. 
So that's why I told you to read it, by the way, because when I, you know, you remember Latqan has a lot of details, and I told you to read it so we can go farther in the class without going through those details, inshallah. Any other question? No, inshallah, when we finish all the chapters in the way that we study in it, I will ask you to read the rest. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. But you don't need them all. <laughs> no. Jazakumullah khair for reading it. And subhanallah, that's the amana of the scholars. It's amazing. So sometimes someone say, why are they doing all this? They say, that's the amana, that's the trust of getting, uh, carrying the knowledge. He has to tell you everything. Then as student of knowledge, or scholars, they will take a rajah, then to use it into their life. 